and welcome to my video. Today I'm going to be doing a few things. I'm going to be telling you about what I read this past week. Um, I can't remember if one of them I talked about last time, so I'll briefly touch on it and then I'll move on. And I'm also going to be cutting out the squares for this little uh, embroidery quilt top. Because everybody and their mother seems to be pregnant right now in my life. Like all my friends, it seems. It, not really, but um, two people just had babies in the past few months. And then um, three more. Is it three? Yeah, three more are, um, you know, within a few months of having babies. So I have to get on it because I like to make quilts for the new babies. So it's it's a dinosaur themed thing. Look at the little triceratops. Isn't she cute? So I'm cutting those out and then um, that way they will fit on the ring. So I can embroider them, you know, like without having to have the whole sheet. So that's what I'm doing right now. And okay, let's get into the book part. So The Castle in the Clouds was the first book um, that... I wanted to talk about I don't remember if I mentioned it in the last one or if I told you that I was done with it um, it's a solid three star and their uh, protagonist is a young woman well she's 16 so old girl young woman whatever she is she goes to work at a hotel I was telling you about this about how she lost the children <laughs> those kids are so awful I love that anyway um, so, uh, yeah, uh, she finds out that the hotel that she works for is going to be sold. She doesn't want it to be sold. Everybody that works there loves it there. So, um, you know, it's, it's not really, I don't know what it is. It's not really a mystery. I mean, it's not very mysterious, but it's cute. And there's a love triangle, you know. She likes two boys. Tristan is, you know, dangerous and, you know, he's the bad boy, whatever. And then there's Ben and he's responsible and stoic and, you know, whatever. Kind of bossy. But, you know, she's not overly bright, but that's because she's 16. And really, how many of us were overly bright when we were 16? Uh, am I right? Or am I right? Right, right, right. Okay, that's annoying. Uh, the second book I read was Midnight in Everwood. Um, it's supposed to be a retelling, a loose retelling, of the Nutcracker. Um, I've never read the original Nutcracker, so I don't have as much to go by. So somebody who knows the Nutcracker would probably be, you know, harder on it. But I didn't think it was overly special as a standalone book. Um... Basically, there's a magical pervert, and he backs a girl into a cabinet, a clock cabinet, like a grandfather clock cabinet. And she comes out the other end in Narnia-esque fashion in a wo uh, wooded area. And it's another world, and there's snow on the ground and whatever, and... um. It's run by the magical pervert. I hope that's not a spoiler, but if you know anything about uh, the Nutcracker, it probably isn't. So Anyway, I gave it like 2.75 stars because I wasn't overly in love with it. I mean, it's fine. It's just, just fine. I didn't care for it, but whatever. I wouldn't read it again but it's a library book so it doesn't matter that I would read it again because I returned it on a Libby so it's gone away it's out of my life now and then moving on to book number three the old man and the sea by Ernest Hemingway it's about an old man he hunts for Marlin I've already told you some of this but I'm not gonna spoil it for you but I can tell you that at the end, I thought to myself, what did I just read? Like, what is the point of any of this? And perhaps the point is that there is no point, but it felt kind of like Fight Club. Like, maybe this is just insight into some men's minds. Like, 
you know, they're willing to do things that don't make any sense because they've always done those things that don't make sense and it's important to them. I don't know. Anyway, and then the other book that I finished, I listened to it on audiobook, but I did have it in physical form. I just didn't read it in physical form. But I just finished Silas Marner, and oh my goodness, I actually really loved it. It was... It was so cute. Um, I'll try not to give any spoilers away, but uh, Silas Marner is this is nice guy. He's a nice guy, and he's sitting with somebody who's on their deathbed. He's a clergyman, and he's sitting, you know, sitting with him on his deathbed, and someone frames him for the theft of the church funds. Like there was a bag of money or something in the nightstand. And somebody frames him, says he took it. So then he moves to another town, and he lives as a recluse. And uh, he becomes kind of miserly because, you know, it's just him. And he's kind of bitter. Like, he doesn't want to, like, get to know people because, you know, his friend betrayed him back in his other town, whatever. So he just kind of, um, oh, he, he just hoards his money, counts his money. It's all about his money, and then things happen, and uh, he finds out that there's more to life than money. So, um, I would recommend this book. It was super quick. I think on uh, Libby, for you know, it was like six and a half hours or seven hours or something like that. So, it's worth the, the listen, even if you don't want to read it, um, you know, physically. But, man... Oh, it was so, it was so cute. I just, I really liked it. I liked Silas. I liked, you know, some of the characters. It was a good book. All right. So, then what I'm reading right now is The Wind Daughter by Joanna Ruth Meyer. And I like it so far. Um, I think I already told you about it. But in case you didn't see that video, you should see that video. But uh, find it down below. Anyway, um, in case you don't know about it, it's um, the second book in the Echo North series. And this is the uh, daughter of the North Wind. So she goes on a quest and things are happening and she doesn't want to go on the quest. She wants a nice quiet life. But, you know, when does anybody get what they want in a book? Usually it's the bad guy that gets the, what he wants in the book. Anyway, so that's that. And then, uh, what else? Oh, um, on Saturday I went to a thrift store. And this thrift store that's near my house, they um, it's a charity shop. And it uh, collects, they're collecting money for um, it's kids who don't have school supplies. Um, so they... Um, all of their, like, earnings or whatever, their profits, go to Operation uh, School Bell. So they buy, like, backpacks and, you know, pencils and school clothes and things like that for kids who don't have anything starting the school year. So I love that place, but they have uh, two little wheeled book carts that they put outside every morning, and it has 49-cent books. So I found The Plain Truth by Gail Roper. Mrs. Roper. I wonder if that's Mrs. Roper. I wonder if she wears like a big muumuu and has her hair permed and dyed orange. Okay. I'm a little old. If you don't know that, um, that reference, uh, that's from Three's Company. That was a good show. It was a fun show. I suppose it didn't age well, but it it was fun to watch in the 80s when I was a kid. So that's that. So I'm getting these done. Hey, little Stegosaurus. <laughs> okay. So, oh, okay. So I'm uh, reading The Wind Daughter in uh, physical form. And then I also have a book, uh, ebook or not an ebook sorry 
a audiobook from Libby and uh, I think I called something else an ebook. It's always audiobooks if it's Libby. Just know that and you will be happy. Anyway, um, so the audiobook that I'm listening to, I don't remember the, uh, the author and I didn't write it down. So I'll have to find that out and put it in the description. But it's called Monday's Not Coming. And it's about a teenage girl who goes missing. And I've only just started it, so I don't know very much about it. But um, it seems like nobody's really going to a great deal of trouble to find her. And uh, she, she lives in Washington, D.C. So, um, you know, needle, haystack. How do you find somebody in a big city? You have to have cooperation. If people won't cooperate, then you're not going to find nothing in a big city. Because everywhere you look, it's either concrete or people. Okay, so um, that's what I'm reading. What are you reading? Um, anything interesting, new? I've never had anyone comment on my video before. So if you'd like to be really special and like be like the first in a really cool club, you could be the first person to comment. So you can comment below like subscribe if you haven't and then i will continue to make more nonsensical books uh reviews and tell you about things and show you embroidery that i'm working on i don't actually have any embroidery that i've actually done because once i'm done with it i have to quilt it and i hate sewing so by the time i'm done sewing it i can't wait to get it out of the house so uh, whoever is supposed to get it, gets it immediately, whether it's their day or, you know, before their baby shower or whatever, it doesn't matter to me. It needs to get out of my house and into their hands. So that's where I'm at. Oh, I did forget to tell you one other thing. I did try to listen to a couple of books. They're both, um, well... One of them is the one I only listened to or tried to listen to one of them. But I don't think that Japanese fiction is for me. Because I had already listened or read a physical copy halfway through of a Murakami, Murakami book. And I just thought it was kind of boring and long. And I don't really like big books anyway. So if it's going to be big, it needs to be fast-paced and interesting and it just wasn't it's kind of day-to-day -day life type stuff and if I wanted day-to-day -day life I could put down the book and look around so um I didn't like that but the one that I just tried to read or just tried to listen to was before the coffee gets cold and you know I don't know if it's because it's time travel or, you know, sci-fi, whatever. But I just didn't care about it either. So I don't think that Japanese fiction is for me. You know, maybe, you know, there's some other Japanese fiction that's not these sorts of books. I don't know. I mean, obviously, American fiction comes in all different varieties. So maybe there's a Japanese fiction book that I would just adore. But it's not anything that I've picked up thus far. So, um, if you know of a Japanese fiction book that might be more interesting to me, that, you know, maybe has a historical fiction vibe or, like, um, maybe a classic of some sort, Japanese classic, I don't know. Um, something like that. If you have something like that that you know of, could you uh, comment it below? Because I am interested in, you know, knowing about other people's cultures and point of view, points of view and stuff like that. But, you know, the books that I've read from Japan thus far, there it is again. I say thus far a lot. Anyway, um, those books that I've read so far... Um, 
just aren't my cup of tea. So if you know of a Japanese book that might appeal to me, I'd appreciate it if you'd suggest it down below. All right, um, any other book too that you think that I might like, um, you can dare me to read a book. I don't mind. I may not finish it because there are too many good books in this world for me to be wasting my time because my TBR is already too long. I'm going to live forever trying to read all these books. But I'll give it a go if you recommend something. So uh, comment below. And I'm sorry if this is all over the place. I'm nursing a bit of a cold, but I was feeling better. And it's Monday and I wanted to, you know, uh, post something on Monday. So that's my post. All right. Um, have a good night and I'll see you next video.